Travis Wayne Goodsell, uh, again it becomes necessary to help you guys understand how to identify BS that comes from the church or about the church, which can also be from ex-Mormons. If you don't understand how to do research properly, or if you don't bother to do research and you just trust whatever anybody tells you, and if you agree with it, therefore it's truth, you're being misled. You're being deceived. As I've gone over Wikipedia, I've helped you guys understand where the misinformation, disinformation, and missing information is and highlight it for you. And if you've noticed, I don't take away information. I'm able to either identify it as BS or I'm able to explain it in the context that it originally needed to be understood. So, for example, I Christians love to tell the world that Mormons are not Christian. No, duh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when you're Mormon and the church is telling you, oh, yeah, we're Christian, we believe in Jesus Christ, that's why the name is in the middle. And that's why the Book of Mormon says the name Jesus and blah, blah, blah. And Christians say, no, uh-uh. you got Heavenly Mother, you've got Temple, you've got Godhood for mortals. None of that is Christian doctrine. And so, the, the clash is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Schler my speech. And, uh, and so you can't hate the Mormon Church and go over historical information and anything that says that Joseph Smith is vindicated and innocent just disregard it you can't do that and if you're Mormon you can't disregard and ignore anything that talks negatively about Joseph again you have to look at it is it hearsay information that is being used to give an, a, a, an evaluation of morality good or bad or the accusation of a crime because uh, you can't trust hearsay you need facts you need evidence was Joseph Smith arrested for looking in a hat with rocks the answer is not an opinion you can't have a vote and because obviously ex-Mormons are going to say yes he did he was arrested for that and Mormons say no he wasn't he's innocent that's not how it works you need to find the ledger that shows that yes indeed on the 26th of March or 20th of March 1826 Joseph Smith was arrested and fined the misdemeanor charge of two dollars and sixty-eight cents for being a glass looker. That's evidence. And Mormons can't dismiss and ignore that. They have to accept it and include it in history for the church if they're going to continue to claim that Joseph Smith is the founder. So here's a trickier one because I'm the one who discovered it. And it's by the same process. Because Wikipedia does not link you to all the necessary information. And so we have we start with the Smiths. Smith Senior. Now lots of people, ex-Mormon and all likewise Mormon pick and choose their sides as to whether Joseph Smith used his Masonic 
Master Mason status on the 15th of March, 1842, to design the Temple Endowment. And the ex-Mormons are saying, oh, he, he stole the Masonic handshakes and names and codes and penalties and used it in his temple. You know, that's the negative side, accusing Joseph Smith of being a bad guy. The church says, oh, yeah, well, Heber C. Kimball said that it's the pure ordinances of masonry. Hearsay. But, even though it's hearsay, and it should be dismissed as whether Joseph Smith did copy Freemasonry into the temple, the fact that the hearsay is from Heber is key and crucial to understanding what really happened. So again, start with Joseph Smith Sr. It is a recorded, documented fact because Freemasonry, not the church, Freemasonry had preserved the records of Joseph Smith Sr. being elevated, exalted, to the rank of Master Mason. And the lodge was Ontario Lodge number 23 of Canandaigua, New York. The date, 7 May, 1818. Now, when you apply that into the rest of the history of the Smith family, you realize that it was a couple years after he moved to Palmyra to start finding a place for the family to live when they finally came over from Vermont. And you also need to understand that he just can't join the Freemasons and be automatically elevated to Master Mason. The Warsaw Lodge was pissed with the Grand Master for elevating Joseph Smith the next day. to becoming a member. And so there are certain rules and procedures. And when you notice that those rules and procedures are not clearly and accurately told in Wikipedia for information on church history, or for anything for that matter, you can call BS. So in 1818, Joseph Smith was going to turn 13 years old that year, because his birthday is in December. So he's 12. Now let's go to Heber C. Kimball under Masonry. Here's how you can identify BS beyond Freemasonry. Because remember, Joseph Smith was already in Freemasonry with his family. Hiram Smith was also in the Palmyra Lodge. <clears throat> and so the, the claim that Joseph Smith all of a sudden in 1842 decided to create an endowment based upon becoming a master mason, or, as the other claim is, that he received the Joseph Smith papyra, the Egyptian papyra, 
and then all of a sudden, oh, that's where he got the tokens and signs of Freemasonry. <laughs> no! Neither are correct. Joseph Smith already knew all about Freemasonry before the church even got started. Even though he was 13 years old when his dad was Master Mason, Kimball reveals information even though we can call BS on other events. <clears throat> when Kimball is quoted as to what Joseph Smith did. So it says, in 1823, five years later, doesn't give us a month or a day, it says, Kimball received the three craft degrees of Freemasonry in one year already we can call BS that's not the proper process and procedure it takes years I'll just summarize it for you Hiram was named Hiram after Hiram Abiff 18 years previous to Joseph Smith Sr. becoming a Master Mason. So do you see how much time it takes? Do you see how pissed the Warsaw Lodge was with the Grand Master over Joseph Smith the next day? Because people want their own lodge. They don't want to see somebody else get elevated when they have been in there longer and have shown devotion longer. So yet Kimball is saying, oh yeah, 1823, I was made a Master Mason. BS. And there's confirmation of this BS because he thinks that certain events happened that destroyed certain documents. For example, in the lodge at Victor Flats. It's in red. Huh. Records weren't saved from that lodge. That's why it's in red. There is no link. We cannot confirm. But the fact that he's claiming, oh yeah, I was the Master Mason in one year. BS. Uh, let's do a quick check on his age. 1801 is when he was born, and so he was 22. Huh. Master Mason at 22, huh? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> then he goes on, that this is, if you notice, it's not Kimball's words. This is somebody who's referring to information. Uh, do they even have a reference? Not until five. And it's Orson F. Whitney, Life of Heber C. Kimball, 1888. Uh, so it's not a primary source, it's hearsay. But he does have a journal entry, and if you were to compare that with this information on Wikipedia, you'd go, oh, okay, uh, there's some different and missing information on Wikipedia than what is in the actual diary of Heber C. Kimball. Huh. <clears throat> but anyway, we have no choice at this point in time but to use Wikipedia and to show you how to call BS. In 1824, he sent a petition. So the very next year, he's a Master Mason, but now he's sending a petition to the chapter. So he's going to another lodge to file a petition with another Master Mason for an advancement in rank 
we'll get to that, in Canandaigua, New York. Again, we can call BS. <laughs> because who's the master mason that he petitioned? Joseph Smith Sr. Five years, or six years later. Six years later. Heber C. Kimball claimed, oh, yeah, I, I went to Canandaigua and I uh, petitioned the master mason there for an advancement uh, to the Royal Ark rank. Now, if you don't know, you'll have to do some research. Now, if you were to Google search it, York Rites have changed the ranks. Before 1826, they were different. See, now they're more elaborate and detailed, and, and it's quite an organization now. But back then, no, it was, it was simple, but it wasn't 33 degrees like the Scottish Rites. And so you see here, York Rites. So he understands that Canandaigua was York Rites. Royal Ark is a leap of four ranks. So he's claiming, ah oh yeah, Master Mason in one year. The next year, I got skipped all the way to Royal. Because what does he say? His petition was accepted. Joseph Smith Sr. knew Heber C. Kimball? And this is all before the church. Because remember, it was September 1823 when Moroni, who is corrected from Nephi, came to Joseph Smith after the spring of 1820, all of this being told in 1838. See how you can use this BS to get a bigger picture of the whole church history. <clears throat> and there is no mention of who the Master Mason was or that his name was Joseph Smith Sr. and that Kimball knew him. No, nope, not a thing. He said if you didn't know, Heber C. Kimball was in the area of the Scottish Rites because Brigham Young was and his older brothers were in Scottish Rites lodges and that whole town right before uh, the church Scottish Rites it is claimed by Heber that the anti-Masons burned down Canandaigua and therefore the records are gone uh, but I was approved huh the thing is why didn't he bring it up in 1842 with the Warsaw Lodge huh he should have had his certificate to show Huh. Or at least he could have been under oath, saying the records were destroyed with the anti-Mason movement, and they say, okay, well, can you swear an oath to us that you were indeed a Royal Ark Mason from Canandaigua, and then he'll do the swearing of the oath, and they will vote as to whether to accept him as the Royal Ark, or advance him even further in the York Rites, except for... The Warsaw Lodge was Scottish Rites. Huh. You can't mix the groups. You gotta stick to one and remain in it for the rest of your life. 
he can't go back and forth. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's more BS involved with Heber. And so when you read and you find out that Heber C. Kimball is the source for claiming that Joseph Smith did such and such in secret, that he's accused of such and such, that Joseph Smith intended to do, you can call BS. Because Heber cannot be trusted. The whole thing here, just one continuous lie when you know what the truth is. None of this is factual except for that there was a Canandaigua New York Lodge and it was York Rites and there was an anti-Mason movement and there is a royal art rank in the York Rites but these are also codes that Heber is giving that he knows what the Smiths did and then you understand why Heber C. Kimball and Brigham Young had Willard Richards and John Taylor in Carthage jail and why they were rewarded after the assassination as Brigham Young then established his kingdom fled the country to make it happen making himself the king with the second anointing and establishing polygamy and all sorts of other crimes and murders. This is how you identify the true history of the Church of Jesus Christ under Joseph Smith. Bum, bum, bum.